The Fluid Flow user interface is straightforward and has been developed based on continuous feedback from customers over many years. We simply create our models on the flow sheet using the elements which are available to us from the component palette. The component palette includes tabs for different pipe materials, our boundaries, so we might know the pressure in a system, we might know the flow rate, we might have a tank, an open pipe, sprinkler etc. The palette includes junctions, boosters, flow and pressure controllers, General resistances, size change, so orifice plates, nozzles, venturi tube, relief valves and bursting discs, and heat exchangers. If I needed to model a single steel pipe transporting water 20 degrees C and I happen to know the pressure, I can simply place my known pressure boundary on the flow sheet and connect it together with a single steel pipe. Each element I place on the flow sheet includes default data which I can easily edit. This information can be edited from the input tab. I can also multi-select common components and edit the data entry for them at once. In this case, I wish to define the pressure units for the inlet and outlet of this pipe in bar gauge. Select my first element, hold the shift key and select the second one. In this case, my inlet pressure will be 1.3 bar gauge. My pipe is 12.3 meters in length. I also wish to change the diameter from the default value of 2 inch. I just access the pipe's database, and in this case, I'm going to choose 4 inch schedule 40. Done. I can also change the pipe geometry data from cylindrical to rectangular square or annulus. I can change the pipe roughness. And I can also consider scale build up on the inside of my pipe. By default, the sizing model is set to economic velocity. I can, if I wish, choose by velocity or size my pipe based on a design pressure gradient. If I calculate this system, we can evaluate the operating conditions on the results tab of the data palette. We can now see the flow rate in the pipe, the friction loss, the loss correlation, and also a range of in and out values, and this simply represents the inlet and outlet of the pipe. These results can of course change considerably if we are modeling a gas or a two-phase system. In this case, we are modeling a liquid system and as such, the inlet and outlet results are quite similar. The pressure, velocity, temperature, density and viscosity is calculated along with the Reynolds number and friction factor. Fluid flow automatically creates warnings which can be viewed on the messages tab. Warnings are enunciated to help users develop efficient designs. In this case we have a high pipe velocity warning for pipe node minus one. If we select the warning, a description of the message appears below. This description notes that the velocity is higher than that set as a maximum limit and warnings enhance. And this is where we set the main design limits for our model. To access these settings, select Options and Warnings Enhance. And in this case we're looking at a liquid system. So we can see the maximum pipe velocity is set to 4 meters per second. And since our pipeline flowing velocity is 5.3 meters per second, we have a warning. A quick look at the suggested economic pipe size reveals that we should perhaps consider a size or internal diameter of around 211 millimeters. And this would equate to a flowing velocity of around 1.2 meters per second. This information is provided for the engineer to make a judgment call on whether or not he wishes to change the selected size of pipe in the system. The units displayed here can be changed based on your own preferences. Simply right mouse click on the results tab, select result units and choose your desired unit. Let's change pressure head drop from pascals to bar and we can also change the decimal point position. 
So previously the friction loss was 30,000 pascals and now it's updated to 0.3 bar. You can also switch between SI and US units by changing the environment set. And now all the results are displayed in US units. The chart tab allows you to view the system resistance curve for pipes. And you can also see the duty point on the curve. The list tab allows you to populate the list of elements in your flow sheet. In this case we have one pipe and two pressure boundaries.